giant footprints in the snow. They're just ordinary footprints, really, but we're in tiny town Colorado, where ordinary things are terribly big and mere man is a towering skyscraper. And when snow comes to tiny town, a little goes a long way. It's a self-contained community with private houses and public houses. And as you might have guessed, all the inhabitants are smallholders. Compare a scene of snow and isolation with one in Macedonia, where the fragrant tobacco crop is ripe for gathering. This part of Bulgaria is famous for the weed that soothes the savage breast. And though it all ends in smoke, the greatest care is used in its preparation. The actual picking and sorting are done by hand. The leaves of the better quality tobaccos are picked singly and strung on wires, like so many fish, or for that matter, onions. And some of the tobacco we've met has smelt just like that. Then they're left to cure in the sun. The introduction of tobacco made the long nights more pleasant and the strong nights in armour more agreeable. At Grass, capital of the ancient province of Styria, they are constantly reminded of those rollicking times by a collection of tin suits and weapons of assault that's reputed to be one of the largest in the world. Peaceful enough now, Grass was always in danger of attack. So with the Styrian equivalent of gadzooks and odds bodikins, the townsfolk girded on their armour and prepared to snap the vitals of all intruders. This vital stabbing business, uh, judged by the size of the collection, must have occupied most of the population. Not only the knights, but their nags are in the show. At least the nags' nighties are. And here are the implements that so neatly perforated the enemy, or blew his head off. And when the good people of grass got really hot under the collar, they blew off with this. 